Now, I introduced you all to Big Red about seven, eight months ago, where he absolutely annihilated a globe engineering argument. And what this did was highlight several things. One, of course, crushing a delusion. And two, was expose many of the online globe believers and representatives. Many showing how daft they really are when it comes to practical engineering. And others lying and exposing themselves as well. Continuing to lie about Big Red to this day. And I thought, why not bring Big Red back on the scene and highlight why these people have had to lie so much and deny what is so obviously true regarding Big Red. And it's quite telling, really, as we're about to see. But first, let me just refresh your memories of why Big Red arrived on the scene and what argument he destroyed. First up, I'll let Mr. Greasy Spoon here cite the globe argument. They're not going to, they don't accept the accuracy, accuracy of things like the, was it the Verrazano Bridge, the, the towers, um, which it, both, which are perpendicular, but actually are further apart at the top than the bottom. They don't. So while Palier reckons the bridges in New York, the Verrazano Bridge towers, are leaning back from each other. Of course, he thinks that's down to curvature. Never mind the fact he hasn't got a demonstrable demonstration of water behaving in the manner in which he says underneath the bridge. If that wasn't bad enough, this is why Big Red arrived on the scene. Not only to highlight the fact he's got no demonstrable science with water, which of course is what is under the bridge anyway. So already he, he made a mockery of himself by non-citation of demonstrable science. But of course, when Big Red arrived on the scene, we gave him an engineering practical reference, one that of course would account for if those towers were, did happen to be leaning back from each other. And it was a very valid scientific explanation, which of course they would fight dearly, tough and now, because it absolutely makes a mockery of their argument. And of course, where it leads is even worse. This is the Verrazano Bridge in New York, which Mr. Greasy Spoon thinks these towers are leaning back from each other due to curvature. He's got no demonstrable science of the water, which debunks his whole argument in the first place. And of course, as we're about to show him, if these towers are leaning back, it's down to engineering purposes, as we're about to see. Because Big Red, as we can see here, is a tower crane. A very tall one that's just built a tall building. We've got him directly side on, well near enough directly side on, to the building it's built, which of course will be plumb. But as we can see, Big Red, the gap at the bottom between Big Red and the, the building, is quite small. But as we get higher, the gap widens. The reason for that is Big Red is leaning back slightly. Not because of curvature for engineering purposes, to pick things up, pick more weight up in front of it. Now, this is where so many people came in and lied, misrepresented, tried to muddy the water. So let's clear this up. This crane, the tower sections are put up plumb. When the counterweights are put in at the back here, as a result of the counterweights, you get deflection in the crane. And as a result of that, the crane leans back slightly because of the deflection in the crane. So whatever direction the crane is facing, the deflection will always be behind it when it's not got a load on. Of course, when it picks up a load, depending on how heavy it is, it'll then deflect and lean forward as it's got a weight to counter the counterweights on the back. So that's how these cranes work. They Slew round from the slew ring, which is at cab height, powered by slew motors. They're calibrated by the counterweights, which as a result, when they've got no load on, deflect the tower slightly backwards. And of course, doesn't matter which direction the tower's facing, because it's the counterweights at the back, there'll always be that little bit of deflection in the opposite direction, i.e. behind, underneath the counterweights. Okay? So many people representing the globe who are well-known liars, 
try to muddy the waters regarding that okay so the tower sections are put up plumb but the cranes lean back slightly due to deflection in the counterweights they do that so it can pick up more in front and of course the results of that of course is a practical reference which why if the towers of the Verrazano bridge were leaning back would be your reference there an engineer of purpose so it can take the weight of the road the bridge itself okay for engineering purposes and big red destroys their argument that they're leaning back because of curve we just had a practical reference from big red with this side profile and of course anyone with common sense in engineering anyway knows that i shouldn't have to go through all that but there's so much muddy in the waters there's so many liars online who represent the globe who who are very very snidey to say the least but the reason they lied so much about big red not only does it destroy the verrazano bridge argument but when you use a crane like big red and then have another point of reference another crane and look at the globe mathematics it starts to get very very silly of course bearing in mind tower cranes lean back slightly okay of course the ropes that hang from the crane will be totally plumb regardless of the crane deflecting forward or back the ropes will always be vertical and plumb when the crane's still the deflection will be in the tower itself okay again i need to state these obvious facts because there's people out there trying to muddy the water okay so we now know most of us did anyway but it should be clear to you that tower cranes lean back and of course if the verrazano tower bridge towers were leaning back that's because of engineering purposes okay that's a done deal and this is why they lied so much about big red not only did it destroy the bridge argument but of course when you use two tower cranes as a reference between them checking the globe maths looking at the so-called deviation of degrees from the plum the reference the original reference in this case my plum reference is a crane in southampton and i compare it to a crane in glasgow which is approximately 360 miles away according to the globe maths i've got to believe that the cranes in glasgow are deviating five degrees from the claim my crane my plum reference in southampton now, bearing in mind, the cranes lean back slightly anyway. So I'm sat up a crane in Southampton, supposed to think, supposed to believe on the same island, but in Glasgow, tower cranes that lean back anyway, remember. But that crane in Glasgow is deviated five degrees from my plum in Southampton. Not only that, we know it that leans back anyway. Do you realise how unscientific and how retarded that is? So, there's not one demonstration on this earth that can back that lunacy. And this is why they had to lie so much about Big Red. It's because when you use cranes as reference points, using the maths, checking the degrees, how much between those two cranes are supposedly deviating from the plum, it becomes ridiculous and, quite frankly, rather obvious to any man who, who can think with a practical train of thought or is, can be honest with himself. It's clearly ridiculous because look at my crane there in Southampton and now look at the crane in Glasgow. Look at that. I'm supposed to believe the crane in Glasgow is deviated that much from my crane. Or it is leaning back that much from my plum reference in Southampton on the same island. That ladies and gentlemen is quite frankly ridiculous if you believe that yes i present it on a level plane i couldn't be bothered to match scale and supposed curve just couldn't be bothered i just wanted to show the deviation between the two points of reference and it only gets worse if we go to america my plum reference is new york two of the coolest cities in america and san francisco sadly now lost all their magic but my plum reference is in New York. There's approximately 2,569 miles between New York and San Francisco. According to the Globe Maths, the crane in San Francisco has deviated 37 degrees from the crane in New York. 
Look at the crane in New York, my plum reference. Remember the cranes do lean back slightly when they haven't got a weight because of the counterweights. But of course, the cables that run the ropes will be plumb when they're hanging down, okay? Regardless of whatever deflection is on the crane. But now look at the crane in San Francisco that the Globe Maths says is a reality compared to my plum reference in New York. Look at that. Look at how ridiculous that is. 37 degrees deviation from my crane in New York. So I'm supposed to believe that when I'm in a cr crane in New York, I've got a pal in San Francisco driving a crane, operating a crane. His crane is deviated and is leaning back 37 degrees from my crane in New York. Do you realise how ridiculous that is, lads? There's no science on this earth that justifies that. We're talking about cranes here, not silly sophist argumentation, okay? Or so-called science. This has got ridiculous. This is why they lied so much about Big Red. Bearing in mind, the crane in San Francisco's leaning back slightly anyway, isn't it? With its counterweight calibration, so it can pick up more in front. We're supposed to believe it's deviated 37 degrees from my plum reference in New York. Any globe believes at this point just shouting gravity as some sort of automated defense mechanism. How does the way things fall change the molecular structure of large standing bodies of water and make that able to display convexity upon its surface? It doesn't, does it? How does the way things fall make tower cranes and pendulums dead still on a spinning, wobbly and oscillating ball that's doing ludicrous speeds in different directions? It doesn't, does it? How does the way things fall make an air pressure system reside right next to a vacuum, apparently, without solid walls or solid separation? It doesn't. So no one denies there's an up and a down and things fall and have direction. What's clearly denied and scientifically impossible are the silly stories attached to the natural phenomenon of the way things fall. Those daft stories can be debunked by a gentle breeze. So stop lying, stop misrepresenting. No one denies the things can be demonstrated, but what's clearly ridiculous are cranes like that being a possibility simply because of the way things fall. I mean, look at the San Francisco crane, which is leaning back slightly anyway, and then compare it to my reference of New York's crane. That's clearly not what reality is offering up. Imagine how powerful gravity would need to be to make that a reality, yet alone then entertain spinning, wobbling, oscillating, doing ludicrous speeds in all different directions. It's obvious that's not happening. It's obvious these cranes are on the same plumb. They're not deviating from each other. They're both the same vertical plumb with no deviation from each other. It's obvious. That's the same with all cranes across the earth. That's a scientific fact. Sorry if that triggers you. If you want to address it, do some science. There is none. This is a done deal. This is why the globe people have to lie and misrepresent and muddy the water. It's so sad. But it's such an easy subject to deal with. And at this point in time, is th this globe is embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Remember my claims, demonstrable reality, test and verified ball, prove the globe's impossible. And then, of course, we use a reference like Big Red and another crane using globe maths. And we highlight how unscientific and ridiculous that all of this is. And, of course, destroying the Verrazano Bridge argument. And, of course, exposing why they lied so much. Because you can't have that much deviation of cranage on the same bit of land. In this case, America. That is scientifically impossible and, quite frankly, ridiculous. Have a good one, everyone.